Well, if you're older than 65, you've already experienced what I'm about to tell you. The week of my 65th birthday, I received a barrage of mail and emails and texts. I got emails from a company called Better Not Younger. It's hair products for older women. And they said things like, from week to peak, abracadabra, hair magic. Okay, I'm all about that hair magic stuff, but I've got some of their products. They're good, but I don't know about the abracadabra part. But they were sending me emails about their products. And then I received an invitation to attend, quote, a special event for retirees or those planning to retire soon. I was hard at work that week. I wasn't quite ready for that retiree term, but that's what came into my inbox. And then, of course, I received in the mail an envelope from the American Association of Retired Persons, AARP, that said, happy birthday, Nancy, with a membership card and a deal you just can't refuse. Maybe you've gotten those envelopes. And then I received a brochure in the mail advertising a two-day retirement planning workshop. I was feeling tired just from all these birthday greetings from sources about getting older. That workshop about retirement planning offers the secret to building your ideal retirement. And what's the secret? You are. Your dreams, your bucket list, your definition of the ideal retirement, your ability to find purpose for this chapter in your life. Well, I was inundated with those and many other types of reminders that I was getting old and that changes perhaps were in order. But what I wanted to know is, what is God's perspective? As I was turning 65, I wanted to know, what does God think about this? And what was his definition of this season of my life? What was his ideal for my life? And that's why I set out to study Psalm 92 as I hit that marker birthday. I've been living in this passage for the last several months. It's good for every season of life. It's not just for people getting older, but the part we're going to look at today has a special application to us as we are aging. Let me read through the psalm. We've been talking about it over the last several days, and I just want to read it to give you a sense of the whole, and then we'll park today on the last two verses of Psalm 92. This is a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to declare your faithful love in the morning and your faithfulness at night with a ten-stringed harp and the music of a lyre. For you have made me rejoice, Lord, by what you have done. I will shout for joy because of the works of your hands. How magnificent are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. A stupid person does not know. A fool does not understand this. Though the wicked sprout like grass and all evildoers flourish, they will be eternally destroyed. But you, Lord, are exalted forever. For indeed, Lord, your enemies, indeed, your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You have lifted up my horn like that of a wild ox. I have been anointed with the finest oil, or fresh oil. My eyes look at my enemies. When evildoers rise against me, my ears hear them. The righteous thrive like a palm tree and grow like a cedar tree in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord... They thrive in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green, to declare, the Lord is just, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. This is the word of the Lord. And the Lord, how we praise you for your promises, for your word, for what it means to us and in us and through us. And I pray that you would quicken our hearts and our ears and our minds to receive and to respond to what you have for us today, whatever season of life we may be in. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 14 of Psalm 92, they will still bear fruit in old age. That word old age has to do with gray hairs. I think I qualify. I started getting these gray hairs when I was in my 20s. I colored them for a while. And then in my mid-30s, I say the happiest day of my life was the day I got off the bottle, speaking of coloring for your hair. And it's just, I finally got to the place where I said, you know what? I think I earned these. I'm going to keep them. So this old age, this gray hairs thing speaks to me. And when the psalmist says they will still bear fruit in old age, I'm all ears. That bearing fruit has to do with 
germinating, with flourishing, with bringing forth fruit, to make cheerful, to increase. It's it's flourishing, it's growing, it's thriving, it's not just being stagnant. These people with gray hairs will still bear fruit. They will be healthy and green, says the CSB translation that I'm using. Sometimes, uh, let me read to you what some other translations say. The King James says they will be fat and flourishing. I don't know if I like that translation so much, but the word healthy actually does mean to be fat or rich or fertile. They will be fresh and flourishing, says the New King James. The ESV says they are ever full of sap and green. And the NIV says they will stay fresh and green. You get the idea. They're not dying away. Yes, our bodies are decaying and dying, but the inner man within us is being renewed day by day. And these people with old age and gray hairs will still bear fruit. They will be healthy and green. Now, pause, because as I think about this passage, bearing fruit, being healthy, being fresh, being green in old age... That's not how we normally describe or think about old age. We think of young people as being fruitful and having kids. We think of old age as being more associated with barrenness. The body dries up. The eyes become dim. We get hard of hearing. The skin dries up. The memory fades. Anything but healthy and green. In fact, if you want a kind of depressing description of old age, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and you can see metaphorically a lot of word pictures that are used in that chapter to talk about old people. They're headed toward their final home. Now, there's hope in the book of Ecclesiastes because where there's the gospel, there's always hope. But we don't think of old age as being the time when you're vital and vibrant and bearing fruit and healthy and fresh and green. And yet God's ways and God's word go just counter to what would be ordinary and natural in our thinking. It dawned on me just recently, since turning 65, that Abraham and Sarah, or Abram and Sarah, were 75 and 65 when God called them to pick up, leave their prosperous homeland where they'd been rooted all their lives, and move to a whole new life. And I told Robert about this. I said, honey, Abram was 75 and Sarah was 65. You're 75. I'm 65. Fasten your seatbelt, friend. We're getting ready to move into God's calling. Now, I don't know that that means we're going to have children. I doubt it, seriously. But we are asking the Lord to make us productive and fruitful in this season of our lives when so many people see themselves as on a downward trend spiritually, emotionally, and in terms of productivity. We're saying, Lord... Do you have something for us that's a new or fresh or growing calling? We're just raising our hands and saying, Lord, we're here. We're your servants. Do with us, in us, and through us whatever you want in this season of life. There's another godly older couple in the scripture, this one in the Gospel of Luke. And I've referred to this couple quite a few times to Robert in conversations we've had recently. You remember Elizabeth and Zachariah? the older couple who had prayed for a son for years, and then God gave Zechariah the priest the promise that he would have a son, that son would be John the Baptist. Uh, They lived a fruitful life, and Elizabeth spoke into the life of Mary of Nazareth. I love this couple. I love so much about them. And I've said to Robert many times, honey, I want us to be Zechariah and Elizabeth. As we get older, I want us to have their spirit, their attitude, to grow as they grew, to be fruitful in our old age. That's not natural. That's supernatural. But that's what the Spirit of God wants to do and can do in and through us. So what does it look like to be fruitful in old age? When we are frail, when we are weak, when we are old, as will be the case for many, if not most of us, at some point. Does that mean we keep working at the same pace that we did when we were 40? Does it mean we keep the pedal to the metal and we always have to have things to do? What does it look like? What does it mean? I think it's important for us to understand that fruitfulness will look different in different seasons of our lives. Robert and I are watching friends and family members who are getting older, and some of them quite old. We were last year at funerals for two friends in their 90s who had lived precious, fruitful lives, but it looked different in their 80s and their 90s than it did when they were in their 50s or 40s or 30s. 
We saw them in those latter years with their mental and their physical capacities diminishing. It was hard to watch and hard for them to go through. But we're pondering what it means to still bear fruit in old age. And I'm not just talking about mid-60s. I'm talking about 70s and 80s and 90s, perhaps even longer. Trusting God with whatever lies before us, but saying, Lord, we want to be fruitful in old age. I want today to give you some illustrations of people who have inspired me who were fruitful in their old age and see if we can learn some things from their lives. See if we can be inspired to let God fulfill this promise. The righteous will still bear fruit in old age. Corey Ten Boom, you've heard her name. She was the author of the best-selling book, The Hiding Place, the story of how she and her family hid Jews during World War II in Holland until they were betrayed, arrested by the Nazis, and imprisoned, uh, Corey was, her sister Betsy was killed. But following the war, Corey immigrated to the United States and began a worldwide ministry of traveling and speaking. And she was energetic and fruitful well into her 80s, touched millions of lives. But then at the age of 85, she experienced the first of a series of strokes that left her paralyzed and unable to talk for the last five years of her life. I read a book years ago that impressed me so much as I thought about this elderly season of life. The book is called The Five Silent Years of Corrie Ten Boom. It was written by her longtime companion and caregiver, and it talks about how God used Corrie when she couldn't talk. She was bedridden, but God used her in the ministry of silent intercession. And how she communicated with her eyes, with guests who visited her in her home. And how people would leave and they had been refreshed and they had been encouraged by this woman who couldn't say a word. I read recently about another woman, a 91-year-old childless widow in India named Jenny. Jenny lives alone in a tiny house that a landlord has carved off from his own house. And one room in that house is actually just a hallway. Her tiny bedroom leaks and the landlord won't repair the roof. So she sleeps in the tiny living room. She has very little money, a tiny leaky house, and no family. But this woman is cheerful and happy. She told visitors who wrote about this occasion, when I wake up in the morning, I thank Jesus for everything. She said, I read my Bible all the time. She's upbeat, she's positive, and in her trembling old voice, she sang to these visitors a song about counting her blessings. But I read about women like Jenny, and I think of that song, 10,000 Reasons, let me be singing when the evening comes. That's what I want to do. I want to be singing. I want to be praising the Lord. I want to be ministering grace. I want to be a source of grace to others. I want to be bearing fruit in old age. Thinking of another woman who is still living, still singing until the evening comes in her life. She is an aunt of Robert's. Aunt Lois is 92. She lost her husband to COVID. She's had multiple health issues herself. Last year, she moved across the country so she could be near her daughter and son-in-law. And when we call her, we're hoping maybe we can give her a pickup or lift her up or lift her spirits. But she always asks how we're doing. She wants to know how Revive Our Hearts is doing. She's other-centered. She's upbeat. She's grateful. She's a woman who is fruitful in old age. And might I add, she follows every sport you can imagine and all the teams you can imagine. She knows how they're doing, what they're doing. She's cheering. She's, she's not settling down and groaning and moaning in her old age. She is being fruitful. But it's not just the things she's interested in. It's the people and the Lord that are causing her to thrive. And she's interested in others and how she can bless them. She's giving financially out of resources the Lord has entrusted to her. She's pouring out. She's a life giver. She's a fruitful woman bearing the fruit of the Spirit in her old age. There's a couple I've served with in ministry for many years, and I read Dan's latest monthly newsletter update recently. He said, Vicki and I are both in our 80s. 
He said, we have no plans to retire, but our support has dropped about 50%. Through all of their decades of serving the Lord, people have supported them financially as missionaries. He said, we wish to maintain our giving to others and our current lifestyle, so I've accepted a job with a company nearby doing some consulting work. This job is about eight hours a week, so I will still have three to four days per week to serve in this ministry where he has been for many years. And then he said, I am looking forward to this new challenge. Here's a man in his mid-80s who's looking forward to what new challenges God may have for him. Now, he's physically in a place where he can still do that, not at the same pace he did in his 50s. And the time may come when he can't leave his house, but as long as he can serve, he is going to work for the glory of God and the good of other people. Looking forward to a new challenge in his 80s. My longtime friend, Barbara Rainey, enrolled in seminary at age 72. She's doing a remote seminary through, through online courses. She'll be 76 or 77 when she graduates. Why did she do it? I asked her that, and she wrote back, and she said, I've loved Bible study since I began decades ago with Bible study fellowship and precepts, and I knew I would never stop studying. She said, the whole experience has been so good for me. My eyes have been opened to the breadth and depth of knowledge about our Savior. She said, I have no regrets for tackling this so late in life. She said, we need an army of seasoned adults modeling for the younger generations the importance of continuing to pursue Jesus with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's a woman who is flourishing. She's thriving. She's bearing fruit in old age, in her mid-70s. Well, old age can be a lot older than that. But here is a woman who, as she's getting older, says, I want to keep pressing on. I want to keep pursuing Jesus. I want to keep making him known. I want to keep sharing him with others. And then my longtime friend, Precious Kim Wagner. You've heard her on Revive Our Hearts. You can listen to some of her story at different seasons in her life. She's been fruitful in different ways. She and her husband, Leroy, have been friends of mine since the very beginning of Revive Our Hearts. And we had a text exchange and email over the last few weeks as she knew I was teaching on Psalm 92. And I wanted to just hear more about how this passage has spoken to her, what it has meant in her life. And she said, several years ago, I adopted Psalm 92 verses 12 through 15, the last portion of the Psalm that we're looking at. And she said, I adopted that as the passage that I asked God to fulfill in our golden years. But our flourishing and fruit bearing has been nothing like I expected and certainly nothing I would have wanted. Since 2017, let me just give you a parenthesis here. In 2017, Kim's husband, Leroy, was stricken with a a complex, difficult to diagnose um, ailment that has left him in excruciating pain ever since and very limited physically. They've been to all kinds of doctors and appointments and treatments and efforts and have gotten some small relief, but life has never been the same for them. He was a pastor shepherding the people of God and in his 50s was struck with this affliction and is now trying to figure out with Kim, what does it look like to be thriving and flourishing as they get older? She said, since 2017, it has seemed as though our season of bearing fruit had passed as we've had to live in isolation so much of that time. Her husband's very immunocompromised. They're not able to get out and about. They have to be very careful when they do. She said, but I'm still hopeful that even in our small ways, we are bearing fruit in this season. Even if it's only in caring for my mom and others in simple ways and investing in family members. I won't go into the details, but she has done that behind the scenes in quiet, uncheered for ways, but she has been fruitful and thriving as she has cared not only for her husband, but for her family. She said, it's been extremely difficult, and I want us to acknowledge that. This is not an easy season. Getting old is not for sissies. There are things that start not working and things that get, uh, parts of us that get tired and weary and we can't move as fast or as energetically, perhaps at some point as we were able to in the past. Sometimes getting old can be very hard. She said, this has not been easy. It's been extremely difficult. But at the same time, Kim said, God has given treasures in the darkness. That's a phrase from the book of Isaiah. Treasures in the darkness that I would have never known without this season. 
She said, I want to always abide in the vine in Christ, saying, yes, Lord, to whatever he has. That is where fullness of joy is found. And that is where we thrive and flourish in the presence of God in our old age. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will thrive in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green. So what's the goal of all of this? Just so we can have a thriving old age? Well, the goal is clear. It's in the last verse of Psalm 92. They will still bear fruit in old age to declare, verse 15, the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Listen, the point isn't that we can have a healthy, flourishing, thriving life. The point is that we can be fruitful so we can point people to Christ, so we can rave about him, we can brag about him. We can, If we can't talk anymore, we can point uh, to people to his word. If, like Corey Ten Boom, we're at the place where we can't talk and we can't point, we can pray. Whatever God gives us the capacity to do at any given age, the point is to point people to Jesus to declare, not I am great, or I am good, or I am fruitful, or I am having a thriving life, but the Lord is just. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. We talked in verse 2 about declaring to others the loving kindness, the faithfulness, the steadfast love of the Lord, and now we're declaring to others, he is good, he is faithful, he is steadfast, and we worship him. On my 65th birthday, I wrote a tweet. I guess they don't call it tweets anymore. They call it, what do you call it, an X? It used to be Twitter. It used to be a tweet. And I wrote out some thoughts as I was meditating on this passage and this season of my life that I'm entering into at 65. And Lord willing, at 75 or 85, if the, however many or few years the Lord gives me, I hope there will be fresh, there will be fresh and new insights. But this was what was on my heart on my 65th birthday, based on Psalm 92. Birthday week, 65 years. Sweet gatherings, longtime friends, food, laughter, rich memories, singing, prayer, profound gratitude. World's plan, retirement ahead. God's plan, still flourishing, still growing, still fruitful, still serving, still proclaiming his word, his faithfulness, his goodness, his gospel. Pressing on, poured out, for him, for others. Strengthened, sustained, by grace, by faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Psalm 92, 12 through 15, the righteous thrive like a palm tree and grow like a cedar tree in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they thrive in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green, to declare the Lord is just. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. That's my prayer for myself, and that's my prayer for you, whether you're 22 or 42 or 62 or 82, or like Aunt Lois, 92. God, I just pray for you. Oh Lord, thank you that freedom and fullness and fruitfulness are found in Christ. Thank you that we can thrive and we can grow in every season of life, in the midst of adversity, in the midst of fires, in the midst of a world on fire, we can thrive and grow because Christ is in us and he never ceases to thrive and to help us to grow. So Lord, we want to be fruitful. We want to be fruitful in every age. I pray that for my friend listening today. I pray for a fruitful life, a flourishing life, a thriving life. I don't pray for a problem-free life. I think of my sweet friend Michelle, who is today dealing with the challenges of this four-year-old special needs, Blair, the daughter you've given to them. 
I pray that she would thrive, that she would flourish. I pray for Aunt Lois in her 90s, that she would thrive, that she would flourish, that she would bear fruit. And I pray for the one listening now, that they would find a place of fruitfulness, that you might receive all the glory, and that together we might be able to declare to our world, God is great. God is good. He is faithful. He loves us. And he is the one who makes us fruitful. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.